there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a tongue drum. Different. The tongue drum is a percussion instrument where there are slots or fingers on the top of the board and each one produces a different tone. But it all starts with some three quarter inch thick maple. Well, I have decided that I want this piece to be as striking visually as what it is functional. And for that, I've chosen curly maple as the pieces for my body. So I need to cut the pieces for the body of the tongue drum. And the sides are gonna be 15 inches long and they're going to be six inches wide. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rip this curly maple into six inch wide strips. Well, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set the angle of my blade at 45 degrees and I'm going to cross cut these pieces so that I end up with a box, a mitered box that will be 15 inches long and I want it to be seven inches wide. Now on the bottom inside face, of each one of these pieces, we want to cut a rabbit. And we want it to be an inch and a quarter high and a quarter inch deep. And we're gonna do that over at the table saw with a dado blade. Well, chances are that rabbit is gonna take you several passes if you're using a dado blade, or even if you're doing it with a router table, you're going to have to make more than one pass. Don't try to take it all in one shot. It's too much and you'll get too much tear out. So we now need to do a little bit of layout on the bottom of each piece on the outside. So from each end, we're going to draw a line at one inch in from the, bot or from the edge like that and another one over here and then along the bottom in both of those or in between both of those lines we're going to place a mark at five eighths of an inch just like that and now using an arch bow I'm just going to draw an arch now from each one of these uh, marks at one inch in from the board that we uh, from the end that we just placed on there and up to that five eighths mark so you should have something that looks like that once we get all the arches drawn on all four pieces we're going to take them over to the scroll saw and cut them out Now I've cut this to be just outside of the line and after I get all of them cut, we're gonna take them over to the oscillating drum sander and just clean them up and sand up to the line. Well, we're going to assemble the main case and I have given the inside surface here a good sanding. I didn't bother with this section here because there's more to do with it in just a little bit. But I'm going to use a slower setting glue, in this case Type Bond 3, and we're just going to glue it up. One thing you really want to keep in mind here is check this thing for square. You want this to be perfectly square. So get some clamps on it, check it for square, and then let it dry up. Well, at this point, we're pretty much at a standstill until that main body dries up. So leave it alone at least for overnight, and then I'll see you when everything's dried up, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, it's the next day and I've unclamped our drum and just given it a surface sanding all the way around the outside edges. I want to take it over to the table saw now and using our spline jig, I want to cut some splines into our corners. 
Um, I'm going to use a contrasting wood just to give it a little accent, but as well that will add strength to our miters and uh, just keep them all together. Well at this point I will cut and glue in place um, some walnut 1 8 thick splines into each one of these cuts and that will really strengthen each one of these corners. Um, there's no sense in a video of me gluing these in, so once they're dried, um, I'll see you back then. Well, we're back and this is what we're looking at. The splines have all been glued in and cut flush. I now want to go around the edges of each one of these arches on the outside and I want to soften that up a little bit. So I'm going to be adding a 1 8 inch round over on each one of these curves at the base of our tongue drum. So the next thing I want to work on here is the bottom of our piece. This tongue drum is a sealed unit. So what I have is a piece of 3 quarter inch mahogany and I've cut it to fit perfectly inside of our tongue drum box here and it's 6 inches wide and 14 inches long. The problem is, is that when you sit it in place in the opening, uh, it sits proud of our arches and that's not what we want. So what I need to do is I need to cut a quarter inch by quarter inch rabbit all the way around the edges of our piece and that way it will sit flush. It will just go down inside and sit on top of the shoulder of our rabbit on our maple case and that way it will be concealed. So I'm going to get this rabbit cut over at the table saw and then we'll dry fit the bottom into place. To see how we're making out, wow that is, that is pretty tight in there. There we go, look at that, that's awesome. Okay, that sits really nicely in there. You can see that it's just inside of this curve. So when it sits like this, we'll still have the box all sealed up, but you won't be able to see that mahogany underneath. We're not going to glue this in just yet, but we're going to turn our attention to working to the top of our box. And for that, what we're going to need is another piece of mahogany, but it's going to be 5 eighths of an inch thick. Well, I have my 5 eighths of an inch thick mahogany and I have cut it to the same dimensions as the bottom, 6 inches by 14. Now this looks a little weird sitting here on top like this, so what I'm going to do is exactly like I did on the piece for the bottom, I'm going to place on the bottom edge a quarter inch by quarter inch rabbit all the way around so that this will sit recessed inside our top. And with that rabbit all the way around cut, we'll just do a test fit. And that looks good. All right, so now it's time to design our top. Well, let me just draw out what I have in mind here. And you can take it from there, however you want to interpret it to make your own tongue drum. So this will be our piece of mahogany. What I want to do is at one inch in from each edge, we're going to draw a line. I then want to divide this into three equal sections, just like this. We will be center punching and drilling each one of these points here, just like this. And then I want to mark out for our tongues. So starting on this top left corner, four inches in, we're going to draw a line. And then we're going to have an inch and a half space right here. So this will be four inches, an inch and a half. And this one over here now will end up being six and a half inches long. Our next space will be five inches and then an inch and a half space. And that will yield us a piece over here that is five and a half inches long. And then just the same way down here, we're going to go six inches on this piece, an inch and a half in between, 
and then that will yield a four and a half inch long piece. So each one of these tongues now, there will be six of them that will be of different sizes. And I'm going to take some artistic license at that point in time. I will probably round this off and bring this into this space just to give it a little bit of a funky shape. I'll do the same thing here. I'll do the same thing here, but in reverse down into this section. Same thing here, around, and here. You get the idea. So the tongues will be a little bit odd shape. And this here in the one and a half section, this will be cutouts. I'm gonna do all of that on the scroll saw. So I'm going to mark this out. I'm gonna cut it and see what I come up with. And when I'm done, I'll show you the final product. Well, I didn't want to take the scroll saw blade to my piece of mahogany until I tested what my design looked like. Um, and honestly, I like it. I like what I've done here where I bent each piece up. And to do that, all I did was use a French curve um, using that masking tape trick that you've seen me use on the show before, lined it up with the end of each finger and then traced around the French curve to get that little kind of knob on the end of each. Um, so I'm going to now transfer this design now that I'm happy with it onto the piece of mahogany. About the only thing I might do here, I think, is I would like these to be um, a little thicker of a gap between the fingers. So I think what I'm gonna do when I draw out my design is I will end up making a second pass with the scroll saw to make a bit of a thicker space between them. Um, but I'm gonna get that cut and I would also like to point out at each one of these endpoints, I've drilled a 3 16 of an inch hole. It will be the same in the mahogany. The only difference is they will be countersunk just to make them just a little prettier. So I'm gonna cut that top part and I will see you when I get it done. And with that cut, the last thing I want to do to this top other than remove the pencil lines and sand it, I want to give that same 1 8 inch round over all the way around just to soften up the edges. Well, to make mallets, all I've done is glued some 3 8 dowel into some Super Bowls um, that I got from the dollar store. I'll probably end up making nicer mallets. But the next step, I can't really tell you how to do because it's all personal preference. And what you want to do is put your bottom in place. Don't glue it in, but put it in place and then clamp your top down. And you want to tap each one of these and see if you like the tone. If you don't like the tone, what you can do is you can remove some of your material from the back using a Forstner bit. Now, I've done that on a few of them to adjust the tone, and it seems like um, the more material that you remove, the higher the tone. I'm no expert on this, but that seems to be what's happening here with this piece of mahogany. So you can see here where I've hogged out quite a bit on some of these pieces to change the tone of each one of these tongues. So the next thing you want to do is glue your top in. Just make sure you clamp it down really well and get a good seal all the way around. I'm gonna leave the bottom and glue that in later once I've finished completely tuning these tongues the way I want. How will it sound? I don't know, but uh, I guess we're gonna find out. Well, I have spent a considerable amount of time drilling out each of these um, with Forstner bits to remove material from the underside of the tongue to get the tone that I want. There's no formula for this. There is no, uh, you have to do it this way. You just remove material and then you have to place your bottom back on and then test and see how you like the sound. It's the only way to do it. It's a pain in the butt. It's very time consuming, but you'll be able to get the sound that you want out of it. So let's put the bottom on this and I'll show you what kind of a sound we're getting at this point.
And now I guess the only thing left to do if you're happy with the sound is to glue the bottom in. There is one extra thing that I have done with mine and I'll just show you what that is. I have to remove the bottom. It's a very tight fit. The tighter the fit you can get, the better here. There we go. And for mine, I have added a piezo pickup in the bottom and made provisions in the side for both a quarter inch jack as well as a volume knob. So this one will also be electric. Uh, I couldn't just leave it as acoustic. You know me, I gotta go the extra mile. So let me get this thing completely sanded all the way around. I'm going to add uh, a coat of Danish oil to this. I may add a satin varathane after or a satin varnish afterwards. But for now, let's get some Danish oil on this, get it all glued together, and I'll show you what we ended up with. And there you have it. A tongue drum. Guys, this project was not without its challenges, and some of them being just the material itself that I chose to make this out of. Um, that mahogany and the curly maple really love to tear out if your blades aren't sharp. So you want to make sure that you've got sharp planer blades in before you start milling this stuff. Alternatively, you could always use a drum sander, um, a drum thickness sander, and that would alleviate the problem. But you want to be careful with that. Some of the other challenges I created myself, and that was by putting in the piezo pickup. Um, it was an afterthought, and if I would have thought about it beforehand, I would have been able to drill the holes required in order to fit the components into the tongue drum. As it turns out, I ended up having to chisel away some of the interior of that section with the case assembled, and let me tell you, that is a rough go. It would have been so much easier and so much more simple to just be able to drill a Forstner bit hole there to allow the um, components for the jack and the volume pot to recess into the wood. Uh, the problem is the thickness on the two parts that I, or the threads rather for the parts that I had did not protrude enough through the wood. The wood's three quarters of an inch thick. You'd need a pretty long thread to get through in order to, uh, to secure it in place. The mallets they've got to go i'm telling you right now they've got to go i've got this gorgeous case with curly maple and beautiful mahogany and walnut um, splines wicked contrast all the way around from the bottom to the top to the splines to the sides it's just a gorgeous piece and i just couldn't bring myself to keep these knobs like or the the mallets a red and blue Super Bowl. It was mostly for testing the unit, and although I don't have anything currently to be able to replace them, I will be looking for something a little more, a little more clean, like possibly um, just black Super Bowls, so that at least they're uniform. I don't like these this colorful blue and red in contrast with the gorgeous cabinet. Electrically, how does it work? It does project the sound, and that's what I was looking for. If you remember with my cigar box ukulele build, I sandwiched the piezo in between two pieces of basswood, and that allowed it to uh, try to eliminate handling noise and that sort of thing. But with the tongue drum, I did the same thing, and it actually killed the sound altogether. I'm not quite sure why, um, but Either way, I removed it out of the basswood sandwich and put it in just bare bones and it worked great. It does project the sound, but it also does project handling noise. Um, one thing it does do, which is a bonus, is it allows you to play the sides of the cabinet and gives it that extra sound or the extra tone. Now there is a bit of vibration that I'm hearing in some of my test uh, playing, I guess you'd call it, but 
Um, that is due to the fact that the bottom is not yet glued in place and that is vibrating a little bit. Not to mention too that the wiring has not yet been secured. So knocking on the top is causing some of that stuff to vibrate on the inside. Hence the vibration. It's nothing that's that big of a deal. I will most likely add um, some rubber feet to the bottom of this. The reason being is, again, the wood on wood at the bottom as you're hammering on it does cause some vibration interference. And that is what I'm looking to eliminate. So rubber feet will be going on. And although this picture looks great, I still think I'm going to put a satin finished varnish on this just to finish it all off. It's so pretty, I don't even want to throw it off the screen. <laughs> Guys, this project is a load of fun. And even if the tones don't come out perfect, mine aren't perfect, but I like the way it sounds. So even if they're not perfect for you, if you're making it for a young one, what do they care about tone at this point? They just want to make noise. And if you want something that makes noise, this one's amplified and it'll give you plenty of noise. So give this a try for your kids or your young ones. Um, the material, guys, you don't have to do curly maple and mahogany, but do keep in mind that whatever woods you choose, it will change the tone. It's the, there's a reason that instruments are made from different types of woods, and that is because some really lend themselves to be tonal woods and really amplify and produce a nice sound for musical instruments, and others just sound like dud. So if you make it out of plywood, I think you're going to see a huge difference and you probably won't like what you hear. But what do I know? I haven't made one from plywood. If you haven't already, guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I've had a lot of fun with this one. It took a little longer than what I thought, but it was a load of fun and, and time well spent. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this week's show. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I hope you're going to try this for yourself because it's a load of fun. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video. Just one more thing, guys. If you're interested in the pattern that I drew up for the top of this tongue drum, by the time this show airs, I will have a PDF file uh, available to send to you. So you can drop me a private message at the channel's Facebook page, or you can email me at a cutabove underscore woodworking at hotmail.com. I'd be more than happy to send that PDF your way. Um, why not? Share it around, guys. So thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next week.